Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I send my peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his household and the eternal damnation on his enemies. My name is Ibrahim Abdul Jabbar. I'm from Washington, D.C. Um, my occupation, I, um, I am a researcher at a research center in Washington, D.C., who helps Shias and helps uh, uh, educate the people of America about Shia Islam. I also um, volunteer for an organization who fights for the rights of the Shia and to show you in America. I have a son, I have two sons. One name is Kiyami Abdul-Jabbar, AKA Ali. And my other son is a newborn. He's two weeks, maybe two, three weeks old. And his name is Muhammad ba Hussein Muhammad Bakir Abdurrahman Abdul-Jabbar. I call him Hadi. So they call me Abu Ali or Abu Hadi, inshallah. And, you know, I, I've been Shia since I was maybe about four or five years old. My father became Shia. And it's been a great, great experience to be Shia in America. It's different. So many people are from different sects in, in America. But for me, it's, uh, it's been very, very good to be on the hawk and to be on the truthful path. Alhamdulillah. So from the first time that I, this is my second ziyarah to Imam Hussein. I came the first time in um, 2012, 2013. Uh, one of the things that was uh, very unique about my first trip versus this trip was that this trip was just a little harder because there were more people. The first time I came, it was reportedly about 20 million people who visited Kabbalah. This time, I think it was reportedly maybe 22. Maybe the first time it may have been 18 million, but this time it's like 22, 23 million. Who knows, maybe 30 million. So it was, it was packed. The walk was, uh, you know, we had to really strategically, you know, use a, a strategy to walk. So we walked mostly at night and then in the morning we slept because in the mornings on the walk um, it was many, many people who were out walking on the same walk. Um, one of the things that was outstanding was the, the level of service from the people of different, different towns and different tribes, you know, who came out. People just offered everything that they could. This time on the walk, surprisingly, they even had Wi-Fi. You know, they had a zone that was a Wi-Fi zone. Immediately, I thought about calling home on a Viber or something. So, you know, everything that they could give, everything that they had, they gave in the name of Imam Hussein, Abu Abdullah Hussein, and alayhi salam. So, you know, it, 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 was, it, it, it was so many things that it's just so many things that you cannot even think of. I mean, you go from one mokib to the next. Someone is telling you, you know, Fadl Zawar, come take some milk. Halib, the other one is telling you to take uh, something called Halim, you know. Another one is telling you to take a sandwich. Another one is telling you to take some bread, take some dates, you know. And um, it, it was amazing to see children, elderly people, everything come out. One of the brothers that were walking with us, his name was Brother Wasim. He was 64 years old. And he was walking, and every time he would walk, you know, I seen him walking and so almost I was very scared for him because he was walking and he was kind of wobbling. And I was like, wow, I hope this man doesn't fall over, or, you know, and hurt himself. But he walked the whole way, you know, and I, I, it, was, it really amazed me that he walked the whole way. We split up our paths at the end. So he ended up walking uh, and, and to, uh, in, with another group, and, I, and I, I ended up meeting up with him in the streets of Kabbalah. It was so, you know, amazing because he was get, almost getting ran over by a cart that one of the Zawar had. And I turned around to catch this older person, and it was one of the people that I walked with. So it, it was amazing that that happened. Um, you know, it was so many things that I seen on the trip, you know. Um, People would come out to me. One brother came out to me. I told the story on Facebook that one of the brothers came out to me at a mokip 
and we didn't know him. And I have my whole, my whole group to attest to it. We didn't know him from day one. I didn't know him at all. And he just walked up to me and said, Brother Ibrahim, are you okay? So we all looked at each other like, what? You know, like it was strange. Like, how does this guy know my name? And then he said someone else in the group's name as well. So we were like, well, are you from the States? And he said he was from New York. And, you know, he had came to one of our centers, Jaloose and things like that. So, you know, it just was amazing the level of giving and the level of charity that people give uh, for Imam Hussein. It's a short story that I like to, you know, uh, convey on the level of giving and the spirit that the people are in when they, when they are on the walk from Najaf to Karbala. And that's the story of Imam Hussein alayhi salam when he gave water to Hur ibn Riyah and his soldiers when they captured them in the desert. And some, some stories that I've read has said and suggested that if, if Imam Hussein alayhi salam did not give did not give him water, then he would have had water on the day of Ashura for his family. But Imam Hussein alayhi salam sacrificed his own to give to them. It's another story about one of the Imams. Some say Imam Hussein, where a man came and cursed him. And he looked at him, he said, you must have heard some things about our family that are untrue. He said, if it's money that you need, I'll give it to you. If it's a place that you need to stay, I'll give it to you. If it's food that you need, I'll give it to you. If it's clothing that you need, I'll clothe you. So this is the spirit of Ahlul Bayt, a spirit of giving and spirit of Ahlul Bayt and the spirit of giving to the people who don't have. And you know, we see that Imam Hussein to this day, he has given everything and he still continues to give and give and give by asking Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to answer the hajats of the people in the Zawar who come and visit him. When I think of what happened um, on the day of Ashura, and being here now on this trip, you know, I had the blessed experience from the good brother, Sheikh Muntada, who showed us different maqams and different things that happened with the uh, shuhada of the day of, or on the event of Karbala. And one of the things that stood out to me was the hands of Abbas alayhi salam. And I think of the hands of Abbas alayhi salam because what this symbolized to me is that we as the people in our countries, wherever country that you come from, you have to think of the point that Abbas makes to us. Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Abbas came and he came to get the water for the children, for the Shabbat, the youth. And these youth are something that we should always, always keep in our mind that we should give our sacrifice to give our life for. Because they come behind us as a leader and they're gonna be big role models in life. Abu Fadl Abbas salam, and Imam Hussein salam, gave their lives for these youth. When you think about Ali Asghar, and you think about the youth that were crying because they wanted the water, their babies. And Abu Fadl Abbas, he fought to the point that when he did not have arms, he put, they say, some stories say that he had put the water pouch in his mouth and tried to get it back to the youth. Before he, when he reached the, the pond, he wanted to take a sip of the water, but he thought about the youth and the women back at the Mukayyim and the camp, that he could not get the water to them. We must try our best with 150, 200, 1 million percent of our ability to try to educate the youth and the Shabab in our hometowns for about the stories of Hadrat Abbas, about the stories of Ahlul Bayt, to let them know that this is true freedom. This is the freedom that, this is the knowledge that will set you free. This is the knowledge that will set you free from materialism. This, was, this is the knowledge that will set you free from being indoctrinated with the wrong information in life. Because these people gave everything everything that they had to make sure that these children 
would get water so that they can have the bare essentials of life. That's one thing that, that really stood out to me. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, visiting him and knowing that you, every dua that you do and adiyya that you do inside of the shrine is going to be answered, that is a whole nother level for me because we all have things that we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single day we ask Allah to give us these things, please give us these things. But we have to remember that the adiyya and the dua of the ma'asumin is very, very different than ours. They are qurbatan in Allah. They are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, we are just servants of Allah, inshallah. But we are sinful servants of Allah. So we're far away from Allah. These servants of Allah, these abdullah, they are truly close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it has said in the Quran, do not look at them as dead or do not call them dead. For they are not dead, they are close to Allah, receiving their sustenance by their Lord. So, to know that, you know, my hajats are going to be answered. I have a quick story that I want to share with everyone before I go into my short message that I want to leave with everyone about Imam Hussein. The first trip that I had to Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, my mom had kind of got a little indoctrinated with other forms of faith. And she left Islam. And for years and years and years, me and my mom struggled with this argument about come back to Islam, come back to Islam. And I realized it was nothing that I could do. It was only up to her to make her mind up to stay as a believer and stay Muslim and to strive to be a mu'min. The last trip that I had, I came back I came to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and I made the adi'ir and dua and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please bring my mother back, back close to being a Muslim and back to the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So I did the dua and when I got back and when I arrived back into Washington DC, I sat for about three weeks, I was sick, I had the flu and my mom contacted me after three weeks and she said, you know, Ibrahim, I've been wanting to tell you something. I wanted to make an announcement to you. And I said, what's going on, Ma? How, what's, what's going on with me? Tell me what's going on. And she said, I wanted to let you know that I want to become Muslim again. Now, mind you, I wanted everyone to pay attention and know that she knew nothing about my ear and my dua. And at this point, I was truly convinced that every dua and at the ear that you do under the dome of Imam Hussein alayhi salam will get answered. I'd like to end with this short message to the people. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, on the event of Ashura, he gave, he gave, he was a giver. He was a man of charity. Not only did he give the water to Hur ibn Riyah, but he gave his life. He gave his family's life. He gave his infant. He gave Ali Asghar. He gave it all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear man and law. To this day, our beloved Imam continues to give. We come to him. We flock to him from around the world. We flock to him like moths flock to light we flock to him and we flock to him like bees flock to honey and to this day he gave all that I just mentioned that he gave his family he sacrificed and to this day he continues to take our hajats to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the dunya he gave and in akhirah he is still giving he is still serving. That's why we should always remember to serve the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.